So today we got a question from Kenny who says he tends to be a bit verbose, right? Um, for those of you that maybe don't like words, it means he's kind of long-winded. And uh, he sends me this, he says, I'll try to rein it in as best I can. And then he proceeds to send me this book of a message. Um, no problem, Kenny, because I'm pretty verbose as it is too. I speak in a bit of a circuitous way, don't I? I tend to ramble on about things and uh, sort of roundabout ways. So you're in good company here, but we'll get down to the question. Basically, he's a white belt, he's getting into it. He's, he's been in there for, been training for, let's see. Um, for some time. He says he had a wrestling background. He's got into jiu-jitsu for some time. He's training about five days a week. And he's wondering about whether or not he should get some um, instructional uh, videos or if he should do private um, instructions from his coach. So basically, instructionals or private lessons from coach for a beginner, which one would be better? So I'll give you some ideas to chew on, and hopefully this is useful to you, and I'll tell you how, you know, maybe as a coach, how I would explain it to people and how I would tell them to use it. Before you do either one of these things, Kenny, the first thing that I would tell you is that you need to go into it with what are you trying to get out of this? A lot of times I've had students where they will come in and do a private lesson, or I have people that visit and they want a private lesson, and then they don't really have anything in particular they're working on or that they want from me. Now, I have no problem with entertaining you and showing you some stuff, and hopefully it works. But like in your message, you were saying, you know, you don't have a ton of money, so you want to make it count. If you want to make it count, then you need to focus on, like, what is it that you're trying to get out of the private lesson? What are you trying to get out of the instructional? From the private lesson standpoint, as a coach, we troubleshoot. I mean, when you think about jiu-jitsu, it's problem solving, right? It's basically, this is the problem I'm having, and here's how I solve it. And so if you come to your coach and you're like, I want to get better but then you don't explain them to like, hey, well, what kind of problems are you having? How could I help make you better? It leaves them in kind of a frustrating situation where maybe they can show you some stuff, but who knows if it's gonna work for you. And then that leads to frustration down the road from you because then you learn some techniques that may not be useful for where you're at right now. And so what I would say is, before you rush to the private lesson, make sure you know why you're asking for that private lesson and really take Take inventory of what's going on in your game. Really think about what's happening and sort of look for the trends. Like what seems, I always seem to be getting past when I do this, or I always seem to, you know, get submitted when I am in this position. You know, think about those things. And then with instructionals, it's not much different. Instructionals are a slight bit different, but not much different. You want to go into it like, what am I trying to get from this thing? Maybe it's a position I would really like to learn. Maybe it's a position I think could really benefit me, right? For instance, like maybe you were a, um, let's say if you're a white belt, who has shorter legs. Maybe you go on my website and you read up on like my half guard series and you're like, you know, I've seen where shorter leg people tend to be better with half guard. Maybe this would be really useful to me because when I'm playing full guard, I can barely lock my legs and I can barely move because my legs are thick or I'm shorter or whatever it might be. So then you go into the half guard instructional and you start diving into it. Right, and then you can go into that whole situation, but you don't want to just like buy a, an instructional just because, right? You don't want to say like, yeah, man, I just started jujitsu and I just bought this this leg lock series because I don't know it was on sale. I mean, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that, and you can save it for later. But you would again like to say, where am I going to use this, or where am I getting to right now? How could I use the information that I'm about to buy? So, for instance, one one of my first instructionals that I use is a white belt. Basically, it came with a whole bunch of different stuff, and I focused on that, the side control section of that video series because that was the position I was getting to. And that was massively useful to me because basically I'm looking at weapons that are from this position that I'm getting to all the time. And that's tend to what's what I tend to do even now is like whenever I buy an instructional, because I still buy them from time to time, I like to see other black belts and other grapplers and see them go down the rabbit hole with a particular position because they've got all kinds of little details from it that I can learn from. And I like to see like, how do they use it? And then, okay, that's a position I'm getting to. How could I use it, right? Um, because again, I'm still trying to learn as well. And so it's fun to see how the different flavors and see how other people use it. Um, and even when I go to seminars, I can pick up all kinds of cool stuff. Like recently I was at the Origin Immersion Camp and I was there, you know, I taught a couple classes and I also was able to learn from some of the other black belts. And I picked up two really slick moves that were minor adjustments to positions I already used. And so during rolling, I was already attempting them, right? And so that's another thing to consider. Now, whether or not you go the private route because you say, I need help with this part of my game, coach help me, or you go the instruction route, the instructional route, and you say, here's something I'm gonna try to dive into, let me go this route. Whether or not you do either one, here's one last thing I would stress to you. 
make sure that you actually put those techniques to work. So if you got an instructional, watch the instructional, try to use those moves as much as possible. If you go to the coach, learn learn some stuff, try to take away like what like an actionable thing. What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do the next day that I roll? Because that's what's gonna that's what you're gonna need to do in order to progress from these things, right? Otherwise, it's like, okay, you paid a bunch of money for an instructional, you paid a bunch of money for a private lesson, and you collected some ideas, but you didn't execute. Again, one of the things that I always talk about in my email newsletters, be, a, be an executor, not a collector, right? It's better that you get a few ideas that work really well for you than collect a, bit, a million that you never use. And so again, whether or not you get the private or instructional, that's going to depend on you and what you want to do. But nonetheless, make sure that you try to have a focus of what you want to get out of it. And then make sure you sort of find a a, a few ideas that you can immediately execute into your game and start using like tomorrow. This way you can make sure you can actually see if whether or not the stuff is working and you can kind of get that feedback. Because again, jujitsu is nothing more than a big feedback loop as we're rolling, as we're rolling, because we find out what works, what doesn't work, and then we can sharpen it up from there. So just a couple ideas for you, Kenny. Hopefully that helps you, brother. And I'll talk to you guys next time.